evening, everybody, colleagues, dear distinguished guests. Ramadan Kareem for all of you. It's our pleasure in Abu Dhabi, New York Institute, to host this symposium. Since its inception in 2008, the Institute is working hard to attract academic and uh, artists from across the globe for its events and its uh, general programs. Last year, New York University Abu Dhabi launched its first version of Ramadan events, which host th is hosted by three of its institutions, which is the arts uh, uh, section and the arts pavilion and New York Institute in Abu Dhabi. These events will celebrate our common values in such holy days and in such holy months of Ramadan with the community of the university and our guests. This year, we are hosting the second version of Ramadaniyat, which has uh, the dialogue sessions and under the motto or the slogan of Andalusia. The first session launched, uh, witnessed the uh, host of Mr. Ali bin Tamim in a symposium about uh, Abu Tayyib al mutanabbi one of the key poets in Arab history. Now, today we are back to history and we add music to this. In this event in Ramadan, we host poet Mahdi Mansour and musician Faraj Abyad being with the artist and literature Berwin Habib. In order to highlight the relation between philosophy, poet, and music, and the phases of development starting from poems and Andalusian Tarab until we reach the contemporary music. Today we're going to discuss the deep impact of Andalusian Maqamat on the structure of the Arab Arabic poems in our modern age. I would like Dr. Berwin Habib to introduce uh, poet and musician uh, Mr. Faraj, Dr. Berwin Habib is an artist and a critic in literature. She's a media expert, well known for in the Gulf region and the Arab world, being a unique artist and one who leveled the uh, levels of media in the Arab world to highest levels, helped by its configura academic configuration being uh, having a PhD in literature criticism and also has unique production production of art starting from poems to journalism to studies about women literature and uh, lately kids literature. So we had also events here in the UAE that she participated at, like Book Prize and the Committee for Innovation, Al Sharqi. She was honored so many times and obtained awards for, from GCC, from George Washington University, or the Dynamic Woman. And she was a leader of the uh, literature programs in the GCC. Thank you, Dr. Berwin. Our distinguished guests, thank you very much for coming today and for the spirit of participation that pushed you to attend today. Welcome to Abu Dhabi, New York University. Ramadan Karim. Good evening, everybody, in Ramadan Karim, and many happy returns of this month. Thank you, Dr. Nadia, for this introduction. It was really generous. Today, we are going to go together with poetry, with music, with sound, with philosophy in our path to Andalusia. When we talk about poems that are being sung, I would like to say that regardless of this, the, the passion I have in my life is the love for the Arabic language. Arab love and passion for the sound, the sound that starts with the pulse of a baby in the womb of his mom or her mom. This is music. This sound is represented in poetry that can carry wisdom, can carry madness if it's contradicted with philosophy. 
And when we talk about poems here or songs that we know that we all started our childhood with this. We loved this poetry and we were flying high in different modes. We liked so many singers, males, females, through their songs. When we talk about songs here, when we talk about poems that are being sung, it's a desire for all the poets because it immortalizes the poems. It makes widespread and have more and wide impact and stay with time. And the one will be lucky who has the three features being a composer, good sound, good voice, and the poem that will be the base. So when I say, oh, my lover, that I visited one day his place, I thought this is the poem from Ibrahim Naji. You know that he was a doctor. Ibrahim Naji was a doctor. This is the same as we today. We're going to talk uh, with a physician, an academic uh, personality, Mr. Mahdi Mansour. We loved, we loved the poems of Nizar Qabbani with Kazim al-Sahir. Maybe he's one of the highly... Uh, known uh, singers we knew we listened to s songs from nizar by abdul halim hafiz by um kulthum najat al-saghira i don't know and also with majida al-rumi with uh, one of the, or some of the best uh, songs uh, like kalimat and the asit al-dunya so we saw we also uh, listen to Asala singing Mahmoud Darwish poems. We have also Faya Yunan in the, as a modern voice. And now I know now more Mahdi Mansour poems. Uh, when I listen to uh, his poem by Yunan, this is one of the intelligent, new, talented girls. And I'm very happy when I knew that she has around her so many talented person. So the team working with her are really talented. And we know that at this time, easy songs are dominating the fast and accelerating songs. We know this is a type of songs that might uh, be harmful for our ears, but this is, that's it. We say we, uh, when I was preparing uh, the program for this event, uh, I had lots of dreams because uh, I am, when I was a student, I was dream doing the same thing. And I see this, dr these dreams coming through, through the generations. I, I dreamt to have coffee with Hanna Mina in his home and also had dreams to meet Talal Haider that uh, Fairuz always uh, sing his, sings his songs. And also I met Marcel Khalifa when he said, when you are absent, I saw winter. And I found the prayer mat, the people that are praying every day. I met those people. I lived with the poets, with the singers. I could see this. Maybe I got confused sometimes. Maybe I get biased sometimes to poetry because I'm a poet. Maybe I didn't do due diligence to um, poets or poems, but when I see in the new generation now uh, singing for uh, poems for Al Walad bint Al Mustakfi, and I see uh, the love story that she lived with Ibn Zaydun in his poems that, that, that we studied at university. Today we're listening to this, at the voices of the new generations. So maybe. In this, at this time, we lost uh, our compass, and we are living in a world without a compass, actually, with the social media dominating, and we see um, lots of good and bad. But we still, that there are stu still in the new generation singers that respect the language, respect the poems. And as Faraj Abyad, this artist, Syrian artist that came from uh, Aleppo, and he's based in New York, we're going to enjoy tonight the inauguration of the new album, The Love Kiss. This will happen after two days. We are going to integrate this to an album. We are going to listen to the, the story and why we have those this due. Faraj Mansour and Faraj Al Abyad, uh, Mahdi Mansour and Faraj Al Abyad welcome you again for this uh, symposium. And we see that poetry 
is the revelation that of this age, and it's a vision. Without poetry, a human cannot be a human being. It's the passion. When we talk about artificial intelligence or writing now or creating now a novel, but they don't have the passion. They don't have this feeling. They don't have uh, the opportunity to make a poem that's out of an experience that they passed through. When I say that human being without poetry has is meaningless, so we need to go back to this real, authentic thing, the core of our humanity, the poetry. Poetry which will lead to music. I don't know whether music leads to poetry or mu poetry leads to music. That's what we're going to see. We're going to welcome Mahdi Mansour. Uh, Lebanese uh, poet. He's a he's an academic person and he has PhD in physics. And be, just a few minutes ago, he said that he had uh, a session about in order to be a physician, you need to be a poet. Uh, this is this is the title of the symposium. Uh, I'm, I was not good at physics. So that's a problem for me. How can you make me love physics? Well, if we have time, we're going to tell this. So you know, he's a specialist in physics and education. He started his uh, career in Al Mumayyizun program in Lebanon, and he had got the gold medal for the improvised poetry. Mahdi also got the uh, referee uh, award uh, for the Prince of Poets, Amir Al Shuara, one of the most famous programs, TV programs for poetry. He writes in modern language, and he has a very attractive titles. But inside, you will find something that upholds the uh, poetic cathedrals. Uh, as we can say, he always yearns to the meter of the Arabic uh, poetry, rhythm of the Arabic poetry. So he had uh, poems um, in 2007 when we met while for prophets not to be jealous. Noga in Ashtar, I fear Allah and love and nation. 2016 uh, land used shoes in 2019 and the waiting index. And we have also rainbow for kids. Mahdi Mansour, he believes that Poetry is the, my favorite machine to live life slowly. That's what I, I'm going to ask you, how to live slowly in terms of rhythm. He believes that the modern poets today are going to be the classic moderns for tomorrow. So you're talking about lots of topics. So <laughs> Faraj Abyad, Faraj, in fact, Faraj, it's very good thing that you live in the USA and you convey this voice and you're interested in heritage in this way. You are singing poems that are diff very difficult for any composer in your modern way. And of course, this is a strong belief of Abu Dhabi Foundation and Arts to host this or to uh, sponsor your new album. This is in support of the new talents of the Arab world to attract all the segments of the community from the audience and believe this is the aim or this is the purpose to reach the most of the community. We say we can we can say that this song, these songs are different. I like to say different because I met lots of people and tried to support. Maybe they are not famous, they're not superstars, but even now they they still unknown, but they still gain the respect of everybody because of what they sing. So Faraj composed uh, many uh, musics, music music. Um, uh, and he introduced uh, introduced so many uh, concerts. He also is uh, interested in playing oud and other instrument, Arabic instruments. With the Arabic touch, I would like to also uh, uh, say that the initiative that you have made in order to raise funds for the victims of the earthquake was highly appreciated. Now we're going to start about the Love Kiss, the new album. First of all, how did you meet each other? 
Farage. It's a good question. When uh, during the COVID-19 time, you know that we were using the social media and Instagram, for example, at this time, it we had time to start inspection to know who I am as an artist. We, I believe that every all of us in this domain and in this field were making reflections. So I decided at this time that I would compose poems. I'll make the music composition of these poems. I will be specialized in this field. So I started to make composition for the Damascus poem for Nazar Kabbani. At this time, we were all staying at home. Nobody is allowed to go outside. So I recorded this in a way on my oud at home. And I uploaded this on social media. And we know that I follow uh, Mahdi Mansour. For, I've been following him for a long time on social media. I'm a big fan of him. So I uploaded the video. I posted the video singing with uh, with my ode. There is no orchestra. It's only me and, and the ode. Then I got a voice message, a voice note from him. He said, this is very good work. I love this poem. And uh, what was this poem? I put on your uh, sand, Damascus, the sand and the land. You lay on my shoulder as my beloved. Uh, this is just a few words of it. So Mahdi said, this is very good. And I like the way you compose music. I thank him so much. And I said, hopefully, we can meet in the future. And after six months, I found myself in Beirut, and there was a, a oud maker whose name is Albert Mansour in Lebanon. He, he's not my relative, but uh, he's a very well-known uh, oud maker in Beirut. He's a very intellectual person, and he, uh, when I went there to buy an oud, I was singing uh, one of the poems, uh, and he was very amazed. He said that you are talented. You can talk to my colleague Mahdi Mansour. And then he got his phone on the speaker and called him. I told him I know him. We talked on Instagram, and we had the plans to meet uh, one day uh, in Jamesa. And then he said, where in Jamesa? Uh, the place where the explosion took place. In, in the coffee shop, in the Alizez coffee shop, it was closed. <laughs> yeah, it has been changed. So the liberals are occupying us now. If the question is for me, I met... I, of he, he he told the right version, but I know Farage through uh, works that attracted my attention because he worked with my colleague, my son Suedan, and uh, by coincidence, I saw this work. It was the first thing that attracted my attention, and then uh, the music composition of Damascus poem. I think that he's going to sing on. Uh, Thursday and today he's going to sing part of it. It's very wonderful. I, in my opinion, it's the best poem that he made music composition for. And working with Nizar Kabbani, you know, Kazam worked with him, Majda worked with him. And as you said in your introduction, So when you uh, dare to go the zone of Nizar Kabbani and compose music for this and talk to the family of Nizar Kabbani, I think this is a big, big adventure. So say that Kazim uh, had the rights for most of the poems. So I would say that, that we are drones now. We're trying to pass over this. Mahdi, what did you like uh, more about Faraj? Because so many voices, uh, Faya Namat, Ahmed Huwaili, it's a, they have different types. Ghalia bin Ali is also a different type. So for the, the very specifics of the uh, voice of Faraj, I would say he's characterized by being 
a different generation. And I say uh, that Faraj is younger than us, maybe five to 10 years younger than us. So I say Ghalia bin Ali is older than me. Ahmed is the same as me. So Faraj is characterized by being resident of the UA, of the USA in New York. This is the cosmopolitan capital. And this is um, accelerating life. So it's difficult to find your voice in this jungle of uh, voices and life. So uh, Faraj being this oriental person who was born in the USA, maybe the second or third generation, and still found the authenticity of the Arabic culture. We see that, that in Beirut that people are being deviated from uh, the rhythm and being moving to levels maybe lower or higher. So now there is everyone is trying to play music, everyone's trying to sing, and you know the social media introducing to us so many good and bad things every day. So we say that Faraj came from the far west with the passion to the far east. I would say that, Faraj, you were born in the U.S. It's just like a plant coming out of stones. I would like, I would like to, li to live as an Arab in this world. Who made you love the Arab, Arabic poetry? I, I have a long story and how I reached this. I think maybe we have 30 minutes or more. But I, I will say it in brief that I am the fourth generation in the U.S. My grandfather doesn't know Arabic. My dad doesn't know Arabic. Maybe my great-grandfather knows Arabic. So I, I learned Arabic from scratch. So I started to talk Arabic maybe five or six years ago. And we ha I had a teacher from Aleppo. I'm Alep from Aleppo, originally from Aleppo. I'm Syrian from Aleppo, and I loved this. So I said, why don't we have uh, classes, classes of formal Arabic class, half of formal Arabic and half for songs and poetry. That's why I talk as a Syrian. But I, as I said, I started from scratch. And through the education and the lessons of the formal Arabic, I fell in love with the formal Arabic, the Fusha language, to see how rich this language is, the terminology, the vocabulary, the meters, the, the rhythm. We know that we have we have poetry in, in, in the US, but we cannot compare it to the Arabic poetry. It, it's rich it's richness. Uh, so how many meters in that you have in Arabic so I, I, you didn't fall in love with uh, an Arabic woman, that, an Arab woman that wanted you to sing in Arabic. Yeah, that was also, and I, I've, I fell, I fell in love with many things, with the wood, with, with many people as well. So I start singing songs like the formal ones, like Al Atlal from Mukulsum. And then I said to myself that we, as artists, we sing for songs for somebody, for Abdul Wahab. And I had so many concerts in New York, but I said it's my responsibility as an artist to introduce something new. Because so many people sang this. Some, so many people over the years did the same thing. So I started to say, let's compose music. So uh, I was in the US. I didn't know. Uh, a lot about this. So I was composing uh, poems for Ibn Zaydun and poems that are known. Then I started to know people like Al Mahdi, uh, my son Al Suaidan, and I started the project until we reached the uh, kiss of love. So I'll start with hearing from Mahdi. Uh, what, the doors of your heart pulls me with the ropes of age with me, and this land was never small for anyone. So why, God, it was small for me? It was me like a Christ, but Maryam didn't pour, didn't bear a heart like me. So can we listen to this a poem? Let me let me tell you the story behind this poem. So it was an integrating opening a new mosque in the city that I live at. 
and they invited me for the opening ceremony of the mosque. So I said it was better to re recite Holy Quran at the beginning of, or the opening of uh, a mosque, but they asked me to say a poem. So I tried to evade this, but I went there. It, it was re -innovate, re innovation so I found it very big, huge, but no uh, worshippers were there. It was very uh, something for me that, that it touched my heart to say I wanted to pray at this place, but I found it closed even after the inauguration. I think at this moment, this moment that we are talking about when we say that the accelerating life, sometimes you have to slow down, sometimes you have to stop time in order to capture the idea, and then you go vertically in order to build on this. So I wrote, the doors of your house in the night are closed. The doors of your house are closed tonight, and the siege even for the tears is still there. How can I gather my, how can I gather my pain? How, how can I empty the time pain? Oh God, the roads are open endlessly and pulling me, and the age ropes are so hard. And this land was never small for anyone, so how this universe now is too small for me. It's me like a Christ, but Maryam didn't bear this heart. Give me vision for this and ray of light among this darkness. And I go to the mosques of the, my childhood. Send angels, angels with my songs because my voice is an orphan now and I feel the pain inside of me as high as a minaret and all of what's written by the olive leaves is my belief now. So now I'm confused with these verses that are written on the walls. You created us as poems in order to rewrite the tears of people. And you give all that people who made this the biggest chair. Now I carry the pain instead of my country. And now I feel this pain. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was a great job. Mahdi Mansour represents the new generation of poetry in Lebanon. You were born in 1985, so you, your, your model of the 80s. We have now poems of the 90s, or oh, poets of the 90s. But your writing in a way that we can talk is the same structure or that we maintain the meter and the rhythm. This is the dominating. This is the key for this. So we say that when we have in this type of poems a sense of modernity and how can we present this with the language, the traditional language. Uh, I'm really amazed how how this is very a difficult equation. How can we write this using the rhythm and the meter in a classic way? So you said uh, something that really attracts my attention, that all your uh, trials to push the uh, meter of al-Khalil al-Farahidi and the rhythm made you more thirsty to more. You need more. I'm not very familiar with uh, people who are very uh, going deep like you with uh, deep questions. And uh, but as I say, you're trying. You keep trying. That you keep trying, and you do an experiment in uh, spaces that might be confined. That might be. Uh, taboos for others. You say this is not like us. We we don't we don't want to approach this. They say that I like the Arab rhythm. I like it. I like the Arabic rhythm because it's not, it's not a compliment. It's not like the, what the audience want to hear. But this is something that runs through my blood. I want to talk about this type vertical poem 
when I can say everything that I want to say, I believe this is more important for me and much better for me than compared to the other path is. So when I say it's, it's about the meaning, it's about the metaphors, it, when Beethoven uh, changed the, 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 the game, he was this, he had this angry mood and for me, I was doing the same. So when the poems that I do in rhythm, tafila in Arabic, this uh, with poems, I don't know the relation between uh, the, the poet and the published poem. Sometimes people and the community and environment will decide or determine whether this poem will remain or not. I don't know the reason behind this, but well, for the poems that I wrote, when I say the doors of your home, uh, uh, whenever I go uh, any any place, they ask me to say it again. So some poems are well known. Some poems are always uh, requested by the audience to they want to hear. It. So here we ask the question about the vertical poems. Is it is it really obsolete? At a specific area era, age, I I thought the same, but now I believe it's different. So I say that we are trying to push modernity towards the 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 traditional poetry, and it makes you more thirsty. You always demand for more. So I'm I'm still hesitant, uh, I'm reluctant to do this. I I can't. I can't say that any structure that she will be used can be this or that, but it's a project that can be done. It's something that can live forever. Um, say we can say that all the poet, all the poems should be one style. What well, we say that we have the meters of Al Khalil. We have different. Uh, we have poems that are attractive, uh, and when you just consider it, you will find it. It's a vertical one. So you know that you are aware that the classic artist that's uh, that's drawing portrait can draw abstract, but they can't start with abstract before trying with portrait. So there will be accumulation of the art until they reach. And this, these are the layers that we can, as Jacobson said in his book. And of course, we have poets here uh, in, with us and professors in criticism, uh, modern and old criticism for Dr. Fatma Mazrui, And I see um, big audience that uh, some of them are very specialized in this domain. So why do we assume a specific type? What I say that I'm not against the prose uh, poems. I would say that I have, I have tries, I, I have tried, but I can blame or I can fear that people that are talking about vertical poems and they never tried that, they never tried it before. They criticize it without trying it. Oh, they have modern poetry and they have never thought about the meters. And this is the last article. I believe this is the last article in Al Akbar um, newspaper, and he was talking about this, uh, the Diwan of Muhammad Ali Shamsuddin, and say that when I scratch it and uh, an orange, they smile. When they say this using the tafila, they think that, that, that he thought this is a, a translated poem. He, he never thought that the Arabic traditional poetry can carry such ideas. So and I'll talk about physically. Uh, in, in physics, I would say that uh, the arrow cannot go forward without pushing or pulling the, uh, the, the bow to the back as much as we can. We need to consider the richness of the Arabic language. Well, and I believe that I working, I'm working today in the education field, and uh, the, the experiment of Farage shows you how how viable a language is. And when you go to New York and you find that this person that uh, was was born in New York and just the love for Arabic came t in, into his love, let's say that we want, don't want, want our kids to learn Arabic and or we say this in media or here or there, but we say that still the traditional meter, the Khalili 
meter is full of spaces that we didn't discover yet. And we say that through our poems, we go back to the vertical poetry, Abdullah Bushmais in his Tafaila poem. I believe that he's exploring massive horizons in heritage. He slows down time and he present. I'm here, I'm presenting a, a model or a, of someone else because I say that there are poets today that write, they write prose uh, poems and they uh, contemplate in Arabic literature. They look at uh, Nizar Qabbani being a key po poet. They think that the structure of his poetry is easy. Even Mahmoud Darwish, before he dies, he said, who will not benefit from Nizar Qabbani will raise his hand because he started with Nizar and then he exceeded him because this is the the network though that you need to uh, use this meter, the rhythm of this meter. So now we listen to uh, the love, the kiss of love. Oh, sorry, the kiss of po poetry. Kiss of poetry is the title of the album. Kiss of poetry. I called it with this title as I felt these two words will represent the message that I wanted to convey from the album. This message is poetry. How beautiful this Arabic poetry is. And in this album, it has Andalusian and modern poetry. It's like tribute to the great of Arabic poetry, Kiss of Poetry for Mahdi Mansour, and then Damascus for Nazar Kabbani, and a moment for Ahmed Shawqi. So, the variation, the variety that we have. And also, there is my Sudan. There is also Ibn Sahl and Dallas. I am the strong Mahmoud Darwish. I think this is your favorite song. Yeah, it's my favorite song. Uh, it's my it's my poem. But I think uh, you like to sing it. Yeah, uh, for, for in my opinion, he should sing both of them. So let's listen. To on Oud, yeah, can you please sing it to us? Oh, your Oud is really impressive. I will sing to Fairuz or the Kiss of Poetry, Kiss of Poetry. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Thank you very much. Then we listen to the poem. There is another part that we, yeah. So can we listen to this? Uh, do you remember this one? Yeah, it's it's quite difficult. Uh, it's first D one. Uh, it's not with me, but uh, if you have if you have it here, you can sing it. It. I wanted. When I say your lips are like almond, and almond is sugar, I believe this poem was because. Uh, so you're going to tell us more about this in Ramadan. So I say that they can take all the poems that they we wrote recently, and will give us the passion of the first stage. So the first. When we start, there is a passion, there is a warmth, because when we start, we have, we don't have this, these limitations. We believe that we are what we are, so we are free. Maybe the first diwan is um, not at a high level, but it has this warmth. And behind each poem, there is a girl. So each poem was written for a girl, was based for a love story. So I would like to go to the second, this one, because it has, uh, it, it, it has, it has implications for the starting. When I say that when Faraj took this diwan and selected this poem. It was not. Uh, it, it doesn't come out of the blue just to be a, a song. We we got the parts that will be sung, and also we modified some of the terms in order to be appropriate for singing. That gives us the um, flexibility sometimes when we are uh, producing songs or when making songs. Uh, because we have people that are very strict and they say, okay, you cannot change this word, you cannot change this, this is my song. So I would say that when we talk about the music meters, we talk about them without we having this um, alignment between the word and the music. So he sent me about, uh, he sent me a voice note 12 minutes ago. <laughs> And we started this uh, dialogue with the team, uh, with his team in New York. So we say the flexibility is the base. So there are ethics in dealing. So these are parts that he didn't sing. He said, I fall in love to madness. You didn't see that my bones, because of your love, now um, has uh, the impact. And now I look as. A beloved more than you imagine because I'm showing only some of my love and inside of me there are more and more so I can sing this also if you want so can can you please listen to something of Andalusia so this can we we can sing it on Thursday and sing us something Andalusian from the Andalusian Maqamat something from Walada bint al Mustakfi <laughs> Ila yawm al-qiyamah 
حياتي إلى يوم القيامة ما ما كفاني إلى يوم القيامة إلى يوم القيامة إلى يوم القيامة ما ما كفاني شكرا Thank you. Well done, Mahdi Mansour. Close your eyes and imagine that everyone became poets. So it happens that the time of red and cappuccino can be sold or bought for two poems of Dante. This is the modernity that you're talking about. How can you explain this? Are you? I said that everyone became a poet, shall we say that? I thought that I will into a coffee shop, see Nizal Kabbani Salad and Dante Cappuccino, Latte Ibn Rumi. I think this is something good. So it will be the poet's coffee shop. I believe that if everyone will be a poet, the world will be much better and the world will be full of children. Children in their behavior, I mean in their purity. So I'm saying that the land is a used shoe. Uh, this, you know, that Berwin didn't give me any indication before the uh, dialogue that, that and you need to go through this. I don't like the fabricated dialogue. I like the, these, this uh, poem says, close your eyes a little bit and imagine that the whole world became poets. So it happens to buy Arabic bread for 10 poems of Ibn Rumi and Cappuccino for two lullabies of Dante, and the expressions of time will die and low, and the family relations, and the flights will be canceled and traffic signals will be canceled. Everything will disappear. It happens that you go to the grocer and then remember something of al Mutanabbi poets, uh, poems, and you go back without bread. And you, fall, you lose the figs harvest because uh, the farmers, when they saw the reflection of the sun in the water, they felt broke. So the language will be the light in the inns and in the coffee shops. So the words will be, uh, the summary will win over prayers. And then among the books, the, the Torah and the No will be a son who was more intelligent to stay. So on the flowers will be will stay without uh, falling into death. So the cover for this planet will be like a bag that gathers the sound of water, and the water will turn upside down on the heads of people. So as stars that tell us the secret of their childhood. So the whole world will be too tight for the meaning until the poets get the world again, get the heritage. So the world will full of children. They will have the purity. They will not change. The only thing that will change is our vision. So we will see that no one of these children will know what happened because they were born as poets. It's an amazing poem. Thank you. There is another part when I say that, but people became uh, painters as well. I think this Diwan will be. I gave it to you. I wrote. I wrote it for you. I give it 
a dedication for Burwin Habib. I think being with us today is a value to this meeting, and I believe that Abu Dhabi is always keen on opening new windows. And even when we were by the end of this year, by the end of last year, we had the summit for the Arabic language, and we had voices singing for in the formal Arabic language, uh, Arwa and Al Jundi, Wala Al Jundi. I believe uh, this is uh, ref this reflects the concern and the interest in the Arabic language. There is also a book for is being developed for the curricula curriculums in Abu Dhabi. Now, yeah, for sure, I'm working. As I said, I'm in, I'm working in academia, so I'll take you to another another dimension. Um, uh, uh, I have uh, a certificate in uh, educational management and PhD in physics, uh, but I work with uh, the uh, education colleges and schools in order to enhance learning. And I think that uh, that poetry can be the pillar for this. You cannot be uh, talented in any domain, even in mathematics. You need to be a poet. It, it's not necessary to write poems to be a poet, but it, just to have the capability, to have the uh, imagination, to enjoy life. I think this is in this term and this sense we are all poets. So as a part of my work, uh, I'm eager on when we start uh, a curriculum in education. Now we are in Abu Dhabi working with Dr. Hanada Taha in order to develop a curriculum for Abu Dhabi Education and Council. And of course, so we uh, have the vision of Dr. Hanada uh, in this domain. We are trying to go for the authentic literature, the literature that if, in, if a child reads this, he will believe or she will believe that this is real and authentic. So when we talk about long poems, muallaqat, we, this is, uh, this is a natural result maybe in higher grades like secondary schools or high school. But the problem is that, that we say at schools, let's talk about uh, let's talk frankly. We classify and categorize students who say this is scientific section, this is artistic section. So we say that this can be an engineer, this can be a doctor. Who said that? He may, might be a good um, teacher, he might be a good doctor if he had this feeling towards poetry. Even when we write a scientific study, because this is part of my hypothesis, uh, thesis, uh, so we, clarify, we distinguish between light, ray, and different terms of Arabic, but in English they're the same. So we say light, light, moonlight, sunlight, starlight. But in Arabic, it has different, different terminology, d different, because we say the light of the stars, the light that comes from the star, emanates from the star. We say for the moon, because it's a reflection from the moon. This can must be translated into the poems of Arabic language, because when we say that uh, some of the poets will not distinguish between these terms. I believe that we are in front of students who receive like 20 classes of geography, math, uh, uh, science in English, and four classes only in Arabic. So we are passing knowledge in English. How can you have this ambition to reach the student, uh, to have the level in which the students can distinguish and differentiate between these terms? I think this is very ambitious because I was a teacher of Arabic language for six years. I, I, I know what it means to have a students approaching language, even in high school. Maybe high school students, they don't know um, Amrol Qais, they don't know. The, there is a gap between the Arabic language and the students, and some students are not willing to do that. I believe the, these, to have the knowledge in Arabic is the key for this success. If we are going to build this in, their, in our students to, to know their identity, their own identity, which is the Arabic language, I think Dr. Amin will be happy with you. He's an advisor in the uh, in educational in education, I 
love that children will understand and be engaged. So though that in our curriculum we are we have reversed scale. So we started with the long uh, poems, muallaqat. Uh, we have the difficult terms. The why don't we start with something modern? Why until we reach the this level? So say the English people will not start with the, with their kids with Shakespeare in primary schools. So I think the policy uh, and the structure in curriculums should change. And I'm very optimistic about this, and I believe this will start with primary school and um, junior high school. Away from the book, it's having this vision that we need different Arabic community. Uh, this is something that strategic, strategic way that is considered a change because we never thought like this before. Let's listen to something um, from Ibn Arabi to Abdul Halim Hafiz. So. I'm going to sing something for Ibn Arabi, then we move to Abdul Halim Hafiz. <laughs> This is not Abdul Halim Hafiz, this is Ibn Arabi. Uh, of course, we know this, but the, the music composition is, you know, is very lively. Uh, so I believe it's close to young people. I believe that some of the music composers uh, tried with this poem, but they use it the different way on specific rhythm, which is very slow. So what the unique about this as a composer to sing this poem in a high pace, uh, this dancing pace, like this. Even the traditional composer maybe will not dare to uh, reach this or approach this. So they try. I think this is something bold from you to just take this tendency. I think this is more difficult, even more difficult for a composer to sing uh, or to use this um, this meter. So you need to put this the words on this pace. And if it is free, for example, like this, This is normal. This is normal song. This is what I liked more about, or like most about the album. I have this idea. We we sang for Ahmed Chauqi on rhythm seven, five, and twenty. I think this is very fast pace, uh, very difficult. So uh, you need to study uh, a lot about this. Can you can you let us hear something about for Ahmed Chauqi? So this is without oud. I'll sing it only v uh, vocal. On the seventh level, for people who are not aware, the normal pace is four. So when you compare four or two, seven is very difficult. You need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think these 
paces seven and five. This is our heritage. The Andalusian muachas uh, were composed on these difficult. Don't say that the pop music and the new music, uh, they forgot about these paces and this rhythm. And that's why I am really concerned with the poet poemry, poetry. We need to break the taboos and go to the what people are afraid of. لحظاها لحظاها رويدا رويدا كم لا كم تكيد للروح كيدا لحظاها لحظاها رويدا رويدا كم لا كم تكيد للروح كيدا كفا أو لا تكفا إنا بجنبي لسهاما أرسلتها لن ترد يا للي يا للا يا للا 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 يا للي تصل الضربة ما أرى لك حدا فاتق الله والتزم لك حدا يا للا يا للا يا للي 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 حلو That's very good Before Abdul Halim Hafiz we open the floor to the audience if there are any questions This is what is the secret of Abdul Halim Hafiz being dominating the romantic songs. I believe that Abdul Halim Hafiz's voice, I believe this, he's one of the first Arab, Arab singers who put the importance of the calm voice. So I'll say that Um Kalthum, for example, sang. See, the tone here is very strong, but Abdul Halim, he used the tone that's calm, the soft tone. 
So this is very unique. And today we have Fadl Shaker is is following the same that the soft tone. So as a singer, I always like these schools. I like the high sound, the high tone, like Sabah Fakhri. And as a singer, you need to be like this. But also, we need to go back to Abdul Halim with soft tone. So in my album, before I recorded these songs, we recorded in one of the key studios in New York, uh, known for the pop stars uh, like Lady Gaga, Noor Jones, Bob Dal Dylan. I found microphones, uh, tradition, vintage from microphones from the 20th century, and I found that these Abdul Halim Hafiz was using these uh, microphones in the 20th of the last century. Uh, uh, so you will find in the album the, the hard tone or the strong tone like Sabah Fakhri and then soft tone like Abdul Halim Hafiz. I think this is a decision that was made to have this variety. But I say that the Arabic song is a huge school, that I'm still a student in this school. So let's listen to the opinion of a poet about Abdul Halim Hafiz as a receiver. When you receive and you listen to this, I believe that Abdul Halim Hafiz was uh, a lover, not an artist. The the song came as a natural result of his love stories. So we say that every man or a woman had this stage in their life. It's a stage that or a phase that you need to go through for Nuzar Kabbani or for Abdul Halim. I think this, the pain that you have in this voice, the the tone that you have it, the sense that you have it, the feeling, what makes the song very important poem? We have the pace, we have the language, but they, they don't live. But very simple poems can stay, can remain. I believe that Abdul Halim had this secret, this high feeling that exceeded his the time limits of his age. I would like to listen to the audience if there is any comments or any questions, please. Sorry, we can't hear. Can can you please pass the mic? He lived as a lover and died as a lover. So, good afternoon. My name is Anwar Suleiman. I sing for cartoons and I. This is my question to Mr. Mahdi Mansour and Mr. Faraj Abiyad. What is the role of family? There are lots of talented people on the ground, um, uh, on the stage now, and I say one of them is Ms. Raghib Alama, the Lebanese singer. He said that his dad was against him or his mom was against him. They wouldn't allow him to sing on the stage. Now he's a pop star, one of the key pop stars in the Arab world. So what is the role of family in the and Mahdi Mansour and Faraj Abyad? How did the family play a role in this? Were they supportive? Uh, were they supporting what you were introducing at this age? I think this topic needs another session, another because we have lots of questions. Uh, I see question marks here because I see some of the stars that came as stars based on something out of the talent. So you say that Raghib al uh, has a unique voice, but only because he's handsome. He's very handsome. Maybe because he's very handsome, he was known as a uh, as a pop star, not because of his voice. So I would say that there are lots of talented people now on the stage. Dr. Berwain, now we, we have many people, but at this specific pace, a specific time of their life. You know, families are the traditional life of family, that family will say, do you find it difficult with your family to sing? So uh, I say, I have, I'm, I'm stubborn, I'm stubborn. So the question, were they supportive for you at the beginning? Or no? So I believe this is a good question because the environment around you sometimes if you are working and uh, if you uh, if you start in an, uh, in a house with uh, people around you talking about uh, poet, poets of the past is different from having different environment. I think this is a very good question and I can say that my family were supportive 
to a far extent, but their support was just out of their love, not the kind of support that will have a uh, value uh, for achievement. So, for example, if you read uh, a, a poem for a, a poem for your mom, she would say, "Wow, it's wonderful," because because of the feeling towards you. This she will not be subjective for this. So, if and if you read a, a love story for your dad, even if it was great, he will not like it. So will show he will show dislike. But if you tell them a, a religious poem, he will be he will be happy and will be proud of you. But I believe at specific time in my life, I had this struggle with the family. So um, one, one night my dad came out of uh, uh, a session because uh, he, he left the session because he thought the terms or the language that I used were quite abusive to his uh, chastity. It was not the same, but he, he you know, the tradition, you know, the, the concept, the vision of the family, uh, the different generation for this. Sometimes they want you to talk with their own tongue, but you are a poet, you need to be yourself. This, there was this struggle, there was this conflict, but uh, you will reach uh, a, a time that you need to understand that it's not your job to let them be your referees or judge. Yeah, so they have their different way to understand. So I see that the love, the real love uh, in this session, for example, my dad will wish me good luck, but he doesn't know what I'm going to talk about. This is the love I'm talking about. He wants to. He wants me to be successful, and that's it. So I would say that uh, this. Uh, there was a poem. I came to Abu Dhabi at the, uh, the Prince of Poets uh, program, the competition. I, I asked myself, what will I say? I think Abdullah Sadiq Abu Bakr. He knows my experience in the, at this time because we were very close at this time. So which one? I'm going to talk about uh, patriotic. A poem or a love poem. So I talked about a poem, or I, I said a poem about family. So I say about family. So I use, I need ten folds of my strength. I need to see the faces of my family to provide me with this support. Pass by me like wind. I would, I would, I never was this kind of lover. But I see that my dad, that who, that dad will read and recite the Holy Quran all the time and has his dream of childhood. So I started my life towards his chest and with his clothes. So this is it. You know, when you. You know, when you say something like this, you, they, their, your family will feel proud of you when you say something like this. So you had, did you have this conflict one day that you wanted to be as a physics teacher, uh, to have victory over the Arabic teacher? So you need to prove that you excelled in this. So you had your studies crowned by a PhD in physics, and you are a poet at the same time. Saying, say when you are a poet, it's not like a doctor, it's not like a physicist, because you know the community has different vision to the applied ling applied uh, sciences. So when I say uh, families will will not appreciate being a poet, they appreciate being a doctor, being a physicist. Uh, even if you get a PhD in uh, literature criticism, but your parents may might look at this as something that's trivial and something they. Let me say that at specific time, my family was concerned about my future, that they wanted me to the applied sciences. I loved physics because physics serve uh, poetry. As I said, that I have certificate in literature, Arabic literature, and I studied at the university in Beirut. Then I moved to physics because they have the major questions. As a poet, I believe this is my job to rewrite this, to rephrase this, and try to find answers for these questions. So the, for my family, they thought this is a good option, and this is a good career to be a professor at the university later on. So, But I had it for me as a ramp also to go back to the poetry. So 
at this time it's it's quite difficult to to have this relation with families um, but you know are these are will all support innovation and creativity and i believe that the first time that you will see your talents uh, they will be very proud of you and they will say our son is doing this and doing that and one day he will be that so can you just let us hear something of this can listen to something you sing because you can say exclusively that I started my talent here at New York University in Abu Dhabi so can can we make a symposium like this and have people laughing if we don't have Berwin with us I think this is I came here to listen, but you put me in a, on the other side of the table. بالعزم انتفضت يمنا في هدوء الليل من هو الصامد المغامر في وجه السيل يبعد عن عينيه الراحة يتحدى خصما في الساحة يرمي ويصيب الأهداف يسعى دوما لتحقيق الإنصاف وخيال أبيه في الأحلام يوقد في القلب الحساس حب الخير لكل الناس مهما كان الثمن من الصعاب سيظل البطل القناص بكل الصبر والإخلاص يعمل باجتهاد وعلى أهبة الاستعداد يرمي ويصيب الأهداف يسعى دوما للإنصاف شكرا thank you so much so that's amazing thank you very much that's amazing So I'd say some of the families will kill the talents in their kids because of their reaction to this, because they're scared of their children, of scared about the future of their children. My name isn't Etidel, which is moderation in Arabic. So it reflects your name, reflects really moderation. We say that there are really talents that are being buried because of the reaction of their families. Any other questions for our guests today? We didn't listen to uh, Faraj answer because he said that this is the fourth generation when he said, so, yeah. So the, for, the question is really good. Thank you very much for the question. And tomorrow I'll be with you with the, in the workshop. I'll ask you the same question. I said, my family, as I said, I'm the fourth generation in the US. So my dad doesn't talk Arabic. My mom doesn't talk Arabic. My mom is actually from Russia. She's not an Arab. So we are, uh, I'm, I'm com composing uh, poems and they don't understand what I'm doing. But they told me at the beginning when I wanted to learn Arabic, the, are, how are you going to learn this? I said, these, my roots, I'm, I'm originally from Syria. I want to sing the Arabic language. But they said the Arabic is the most difficult language, and they said this is the challenge for me, and I started. So now I'm a professional, and I have concerts in New York with ADMAF, and the, 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 who supported uh, and sponsored my album, Abu Dhabi Music Festival. We have collaboration, and I sang at Carnegie Hall, which is the key uh, place in the U.S., if some people will, uh, when they start to, to learn music, they say, well, maybe we see you one day at Carnegie Hall, maybe because this is the ultimate goal. It's uh, something like impossible. It's, uh, uh, say, from Abu Dhabi Music Festival helped me to sing at Carnegie Hall. Uh, but it was not only, uh, it, it, was, it was a song for Ibn Arabi, and I taught the Americans what uh, Ibn Arabi, what is the meaning of this uh, poem that he sang earlier, and we they were very proud of me. They were not, uh, they don't know exactly, they didn't understand it uh, at the beginning. Sometimes they were quite nervous, re reluctant. 
um, concerned because you know dad or mom this is their job to be to worry about their kids future so five or six years later so now they are quite familiar with this and they see this is something good and there is um, the fruit of the efforts that I'm doing I'm very proud of this and they now my dad as I said from Aleppo but he doesn't know Arabic but the now, through this work in concert, he wanted to learn his own language. He wanted to go back to his roots. So I believe things. Let's get the last question if we have. Yeah, please. Yeah. My name is Fatima Muftah from Libya. I assume that I'm a poet. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Najat al Zahri, my colleague. Let's say, Najat al-Zahri, the poet, yeah, she's here. I would like to. Now we can have improvised poetry. Uh, Najat uh, uh, accompanied me today for this nice place, and I'm very grateful for this. I would like to propose some of the questions that always on my mind regarding the language. What we can introduce to the language, what we can add to the language, and are we really helping the generation to love the Arabic language in a community or a system that's uh, getting away from the Arabic language because people, the world is thinking in English? So we are in front of a challenge. Are we really uh, helping the Arabic language to regain its position? And the other thing is what I see that all the symposia that I attended in Abu Dhabi after the uh, Prince of Poets uh, and even after my own experience. So these, uh, these symposia are attended by poets themselves, poets listening to poets. So this is a problem. This is a key issue for us. How can we, how can we approach the community more? How can we get closer to the community? Because now we are writing to the elite only. That's it. So your question is for Mahdi Mansour, right? Because he lived the same experience and with a Prince of Poet. Yeah, she was there. She participated there, yeah. So it's a very key question. Are there any other questions? Yes. Today, I heard about this event, so I came. I think there is a conflict between uh, education and uh, early childhood. So I was born in, in, in Lebanon. They have this uh, education system about uh, language and about heritage. Then we grow up. We find that philosophy and even religion is something away from our practical life because the real life is business interests, how everyone is going to make their life move. But what we see that the contemporary world, the love and poetry, philosophy, humanity, humanitarians, uh, humanities, I think that we have hearts made of stones in order to work in companies. And we see that the things that we are listening to now is from another planet. We need to go back to the real world. We need to go back to the wor world of love and sensation. But our daily life will take us away from this. When the more, the harder you have, your heart is, the more successful you are in the community. And people who love uh, philosophy and poetry are quite a stranger in our community. Oh, yeah, it's very important. <laughs> it's very pessimistic, let's say. It's not pessimistic, it's practical, because we're talking about daily life. Uh, on my weekend, I like to read. As I said, I was born in Lebanon, and I continued my education in France. Uh, um, I have philosophy, poetry. I sometimes go to the beach, read about philosophy, religion, about love, about poetry. But you don't. But you don't write poetry, right? You don't. You don't try to make a poem to your life, to your wife, and 
<laughs> say this is just in order to gain something and <laughs> you <laughs> I doubt that you studied at Lebanon <laughs> so your your question is really important to so say during the weekend I read uh, about p poetry I read about love and philosophy so f from Monday to Friday I'm working in my company so I my heart turns into stone again so say that this is the law of life so when we talk about l life law and poetry you can you can change the laws but say even in my religion when i go to pray my religion asks me to love love and love you know all the religion will teach us to love each other to to forgive to but in business the competition that we have there is a law of the jungle this is very Berwin, we met before in the Arabic summit, and, and uh, I have hope. I'm very optimistic. Uh, poetry is very wonderful. Writing is wonderful. We need more people like Berwin and the people here in order to have workshops for writing. I proposed this, and I say that in the U.S. I attended workshops for writing maybe in English. It was it was not available in Arabic, but uh, unfortunately, in the region here, we don't have we lack this type of workshops. Workshops for writing poetry, for writing stories, novels, prose. I think the issue that sometimes that you have children at home or you are a person that you want to write but you don't know where to go. One of the things that I saw in the U.S. that there are workshops for writing. So if you have an idea that you don't know how to phrase it or how to write it, you go there. So you go there in a session. So I get sometimes 10 people, um, sometimes 10 females only, and we have their mentor and she's or the coach. I think the workshops is very, very uh, good uh, opportunity, and there are there are like writing clubs. So we need to belong to this. We are here at universities with writers and authors. We need to create this type of workshops for the students and for people who are interested or they have the talent in writing. Thank you very much. We would like to answer the question of uh, uh, I'm, I'm really I'm really concerned about his his pessimistic vision. So for the, for Miss Fatima, I would like to say that our issue or our problem and recently I was really confused and very concerned. What are we going to do with the Arabic language? We have symposium to support Arabic language. And we probably, uh, I think when we think about as a team away from the language of enabling or empowering uh, Arabic language, we need to live the Arabic language. We need to live our life in a normal way, in the right way. So when uh, it's it's not teaching Arabic because I want to regain my authenticity. I want to live this. I want to use it. I want to love using this one. I want to write using this one because I don't want to t talk about the Arabic language. I want to use the Arabic language. And I think this is something that needs more sessions to and discussions very specialized in this field. And uh, the other question about the material life, whether we are living as human being or as robots, and are we willing to have talented people who can compassionate, who can have the compassion and who can have solutions for the future, as you said, in the liberal life that we're living and the business life that we are living in. Uh, this is 
this is a, a dialogue that is uh, social, can be social and uh, philosophical. I'm not the right person to talk about this, but l let's say, let me say that it's a good thing that you're reading during the weekend. And even when I say when I'm at the laboratory using my tools, when I have this uh, deep inside of me, I can use the material to go to metaphysics and and what we have today in the modern sciences, we are using the common sense. We are not, we didn't see the atom, we didn't see the black holes, but uh, as I said, this is a long discussion. And I believe that the last comment was in the same context. I would like to thank you very much for attending. I say that all the questions were really valuable. Maybe we, let me, uh, have different uh, uh, opinion. We are not concerned about the language. We are not, con or because when we talk about language, we are in front of a real concern because we have in drama, we have in cinema, we have in songs, even in poetry when we sing poems. I think this way we immunize our language, the Arabic language. Thank you for very much for attending. Thank you, Mr. Mahdi Mansour, the talented poet. Uh, poet and uh, thanks for the, Mr. Faraj Abiyad. Thank you for New York University for allowing us this opportunity. opportunity. Thank you for Nahid also for the coordinator and thank you for the administration.